On the 24th of February, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered his troops to invade Ukraine. The European Union, as well as its member states, reacted swiftly and adopted a wide range of sanctions, targeting the Russian government, financial institutions, state-owned companies, as well as President Putin and his inner circle. In a government statement on the 27th of February, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz spoke about a turning point in history, a Zeitenwende. While announcing a military and financial aid to Ukraine, and extra funding for the German armed forces. These are major shifts in German foreign and defense policy. In this short series, views on Russia's attack on Ukraine, we see how countries around the world are reacting to this war in Europe. My name is Jan Leino, and I work at the Konrad Arnau Foundation's Multinational Development Policy Dialogue in Brussels. For today's discussion, I'm delighted to keep Konrad Arnau Foundation's Country Director from Hanoi, Mr. Florian Feierabend. Florian, thank you for joining us. Jana, thank you for having me and good afternoon from Hanoi, Vietnam. Nice that you join us. So um, we have heard a lot of about uh, German uh, reactions, European reactions, condemnation from the United States, military aid to Ukraine. Uh, how has uh, Vietnam reacted to this crisis? It was quite remarkable that it took quite a while for the Vietnamese government to position itself. So the first official statement on the invasion of Ukraine was found on the 25th of February, so one day after the invasion. And this uh, statement was quite ambiguous and quite soft in its tone, called for a restraint for all concerned parties. So it did not put blame on any side. It not, did not mention the word Russia even. I mean, only Ukraine was featured in that statement. And it also expressed grave concern over the armed conflict. Now we are already going into the almost second week of the conflict. Has this changed or has Vietnam stayed on this ambiguity? So I'm, I'm sure you are well aware of the special emergency session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And during that session, the ambassador of Vietnam also gave a speech, addressed the General Assembly, and he condemned, without naming Russia, but he condemned the ambitions for domination. And he also urged for respect of the political independence and territorial integrity, two fundamental principles of international law. So we can see that Vietnam is avoiding to take side, is very much trying to position itself as a neutral power, but on an abstract level, by emphasizing certain principles, it is making clear what is the position of Vietnam and that the current endeavor of Russia and Ukraine is not something that is welcomed by Vietnam. What's the background to this? Is there a historic reason? Why, why does Vietnam react to how it, how it is reacting? I think the avoidance of the, the word Russia, that you try not to, to name even the Russian involvement in there, and uh, that you for sure do not blame Russia for any activities in Ukraine. They call it here in the state media, the special military operation. So that's a clear framing. Russian perspective can be explained by the special relationship between the Russian Federation or back then the Soviet Union and Vietnam. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union and Vietnam were close allies. The Soviet Union supported Vietnam in its struggle against the French, against the Americans, then the Cambodians, and also the Chinese. So this historic legacy might be one explanation, while one is a little bit reluctant to, to name and blame Russia. And of course, uh, this relationship was not only limited to political support for Vietnam. A lot of members of the political elite, of the economic, the business elite of Vietnam, um, went for their studies to Moscow. They have a very close relationship, an emotional tie to Russia. And uh, this might also be one, one explanation for the reluctancy to, to put a blame on Russia. There's a strong positive sentiment in the older generation of, of the Vietnamese society. So there's also one hard factor that should not be neglected. If we look at the time period from the year 2000 until 2019, 84% of arms imports of Vietnam were derived from the Russian Federation. So there's a very clear dependency on Russian arms for the um, Vietnamese military. And this hard factor might also be one factor to explain the reluctancy to, to blame Russia. And I think in my understanding, it, it is also the most important factor. And of course, there's a second aspect. Why is Vietnam stressing these abstract principles of international law? emphasizing political independence and territorial integrity and condemning ambitions for domination. This is, of course, because Vietnam is very well aware of its own geographic location, of its history, and of its geopolitical position. With a very strong, powerful, and more and more assertive neighbor, China, the elephant in the room, in a direct immediate neighborhood, Vietnam can, of course, see the parallels. I mean, there are several unresolved territorial disputes between Vietnam and China, 
And if we follow the discourse on social media here, we can see that many observers and, and analysts would draw that parallel conclusion that if Russia will be allowed to follow through with such a policy, it might also increase the appetite of China to solve disputes with neighboring states or entities in its own way, also with the use of military force. Okay, so China plays a big role in Vietnamese decisions as well, as well as arm, arm, arms import, um, as I understood. Um, also, the European Union is a, is a close partner of Vietnam. There is a free trade agreement uh, in, in place with the European Union. How do you see the change in this geopolitical landscape affecting the relation between the European Union and Vietnam? I think from a European or larger scale, from a Western perspective, one has to be realistic. It would not be realistic to assume that Vietnam would take side in this conflict, that Vietnam would openly condemn Russia, just for the reason that I just mentioned, especially due to the strong relationship in, in arms cooperation. If you look at the statements of the past few days, and I mentioned it took quite a while for Vietnam to issue the first statements, and the first statement was very vague, very ambiguous and not using harsh words. Now we can see at the statement from the Vietnamese ambassador at the UN General Assembly meeting that certain elements are mentioned on an abstract level, but if one wants to draw one conclusion is that Vietnam is uh, not supporting the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Thank you very much, uh, Florian, for this um, talk. Wish you good luck. Please uh, remember to follow our Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram accounts. And we get back to you with other countries from around the world on the Russia and Ukraine crisis. Thank you very much for joining us, Florian. Thank you, Jana.